Well, as more evidence surfaces of the TSA acting as a lawless gang that is power tripping, now they're extending it to law enforcement officers, real law enforcement officers, because, you know, of course, the TSA are not law enforcement officers. We have a police chief who is going to the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association meeting, and he was singled out at the Albuquerque, New Mexico airport. We're going to let him tell you his story and what happened to him. Police Chief Harger, I really appreciate you taking a stand for the Constitution. I'm so sorry to see that this has happened. It is absolutely amazing for us from this perspective. But could you lay out exactly what happened in the sequence of events when you went to the Albuquerque airport on your way to the CSPOA convention? Uh, absolutely. Um, so myself and retired Sheriff Rene Rivetta, who was at that time serving as the deputy chief for my agency, we were in route to attend this conference in Las Vegas, and uh, due to former investigations that I've been involved in, a um, very high-profile case, my name was changed legally through the courts, and it was sealed under record. And so I have two different names. Uh, I haven't flown in years by choice because of the conduct of TSA. Mm -hmm. But for this particular event, I had really had no choice. And so I told uh, Sheriff Rivetta, let's go talk to a TSA supervisor, explain you know our circumstances, because my biggest concern was regarding my driver's license. The expiration date had just expired. So we go upstairs and we speak to a supervisor. She was very cordial. We explained to our circumstances and uh, she said, not a problem. It's within one year of expiration. So you can fly. There's no issue. I said, you know, thank you so much. We go downstairs, we go to the ticket counter, present identification again. We're present, we're you know, provided with our tickets and our boarding passes. We book in our luggage and then here comes uh, a young officer from the Albuquerque Aviation Police, um, and, and he's being quite stern in his demeanor and so forth. He says, I need to speak with you guys. Okay. So myself and Sheriff Rivetta goes off to the side with this individual and another officer, and we speak with him. He demands to see identification. Uh, we provide him with identification, and uh, he starts questioning us. I said, you know, what's going on? And he says, well, you were, you were named as a suspicious person. Mm -hmm. I said, really? I said, you know, what is so suspicious about me? He said, did you go upstairs? And I said, yeah, I did. I, I spoke with the TSA person up there. But what were you discussing with them? I said, I had a question about my, my flight itinerary and, and any problems that may arise from an expiration date and so forth. I don't recall the exact verbiage I used, but that was the gist of the conversation. And so ultimately, um, I finally said, you know, am, am I being charged with something? Am I free to go? He gave us our information back, and we were sent on our way. And... Um, we, we go upstairs through the TSA screening. Uh, Sheriff Rivetta was allowed right, right through. When I approached, uh, the lady asked me where I was going. And I told her that I was going to Las Vegas. And she then asked, what was my business there? And I, I made the statement that that's private, and I kept walking. So then I get up to the, um, the scanner, and I put all my stuff through the scanner. I went through the metal detector, and I was forced to go through it three times. Uh, I didn't have any metal on me. You know, that I was aware of, but it kept going off. Nonetheless, I get through the thing, get all my stuff back, and I start walking towards the turnstile, and I'm approached by a man in a dark suit who flaps open a wallet and shuts it and puts it back in his pocket. I don't know who he was with. He didn't ever show me a card or nothing like that. I don't have anything from him. He was not wearing a uniform, but he claimed to be a federal investigator. Those mm -hmm. were his words. And so he want, demands to see identification, and I tell him, you know, we've already been through this. I've already presented my identification at least three times to, to various officials. What's going on? And he told me that I was a person of interest, that I was uh, listed as being suspicious. Hmm. So I, I comply. I give him my credentials, and um, he, he really just sort of belabored the point, and I finally just asserted my First Amendment rights, my Fourth Amendment rights, and it really uh, upset him. You could see it in his demeanor. Ultimately, I gave him a scenario. I said, you know, sir, the way you're treating me, I said, how would you like it if I were to treat you that way? And I, I said, just for example, you come to my jurisdiction. I don't have probable cause. I don't have reasonable suspicion. There's nothing suspicious about you, but I just pull you over and say, I stopped you because you're suspicious. Mm -hmm. And you asked me, well, what's suspicious about me? And I, I went through this whole scenario, and I said, you wouldn't appreciate that very much, would you? And he said, I'm paid to be suspicious. I said, really? You're paid to be suspicious of law enforcement officers? I said, I will remember that the next time I pull over a TSA agent, that they are paid to be suspicious of me, a cop. 
In well, other they, words, I was pointing out the idiosyncrasy of what he was saying. They're, they're paid to treat everyone as if we are guilty. They're trained to treat us all as terrorists, even though, as we just reported, they allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to get a VIP pass when they came here. So you're, you're Al-Qaeda, you're suspicious just because you're an American. But, but go ahead, tell us what happened then after uh, you, did anything happen or we, at that point you were allowed to get onto the plane? Well, he, he starts closing distance on me, becoming increasingly more hostile, making statements that you don't cop an attitude with me. Do you understand? Oh. So he's speaking to the chief of police as though I am I'm a convicted felon on the street who, who is in the process of committing some crime. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the aviation police sort of got between us and uh, allowed us to be on our way. And we did. We got... Uh, we'd stopped off at our at our at our gate. We got a, uh, a jug of orange juice. Was was just getting some refreshments, and a person in plain clothes walks up and takes our picture and walks off. Oh, and I really? Thought, that is that is just so odd. So we get on our plane. I had no carry on. Once we land, we get our baggage. My baggage had been searched. Huh. They turned on my laptop computer. Attempted to access my laptop computer. Wow. And you know, I I, I thought that was suspicious. And so we go to this thing. I didn't know what I was getting into when I went to this Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association meeting. I knew very little about it. But once I got there, my eyes were opened. I saw a group of men and women, law enforcement, decorated law enforcement officers from all over the country, painstakingly constructing documents to help preserve our American way of life. Mm -hmm. Men, grown men, with tears rolling down their face, grieving over what was happening to our country. And I realized I'm onto something here. This is bigger than all of us. This is about our God-given rights. And so I signed on. I got on board wholeheartedly. And I left feeling refreshed. And so once I left, I get to, um, I, I get to the airport, no problems going through Vegas. I did refuse to go through the uh, nude scanner x-ray machine. Uh, they, they advised me they would have to pat me down, including my genitals and anus. <laughs> I told them, do not probe me. Uh, do not do anything inappropriate. And so the, the guy patted me down. It was quite limited. And we were allowed to, to land here in, in Albuquerque. The moment I got on the ground and turned on my, my cell phone, my department-issued cell phone, I had a message from the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department. I made contact with Lieutenant Benelli, who stated that my law enforcement credentials with the Sheriff's Department were being revoked. So I'm cross-commissioned. I have hmm. dual authority. Mm -hmm. So that dual authority was being revoked by the sheriff, and uh, was really no reason as to why. Now, if I didn't already state this, I'm, I'm going to restate it if I did. While in the airport in Albuquerque, and, and having this confrontation with this unethical, unconstitutional TSA agent, he made the statement to me, I know people in your district, and I'm going to make some phone calls. Well, he, he lived up to his word. He contacted Sheriff Doug Wood of the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department, made his allegations. Now, the key thing to remember is uh, he's not – Sandoval County has nothing to do with Bernalillo County, which is where the airport is housed. So this – this he had no jurisdiction over this issue. It was unethical for a lot of reasons. But Sheriff Wood then made a complaint to my agency, and I was called in on my day off, placed on administrative leave, ordered to collect all handguns, badges, commission cards, uniforms, equipment from my officers, and then to report – for a town hall meeting tonight at six o'clock. Wow. You know, what you experienced in this trip, you saw where this is all headed because the TSA is the tip of the spear on tyranny. You saw arbitrary power being exercised by these people treating everyone as if they are a criminal suspect without any cause. And, and then you go to this convention and you see sheriffs who understand where this is going. I've talked to law enforcement against prohibition as retired uh, prosecutors and sheriffs and police chiefs who have come out against prohibition because they've seen the corruption. And you have seen the corruption of tyranny and the suspension of due process that we all go through when we travel. And now, of course, they're rolling the TSA out. It is the travel security, you know, transportation security association. It's not just airports. They're rolling it out everywhere. And they're rolling it out at the Super Bowl this weekend. They're going to be everywhere in everybody's jurisdiction. And how do we roll this back? Well, I can tell you that if I'm not removed from my position, they will not be in my jurisdiction. I won't allow it. My citizens are not going to be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures, unlawful detentions, 
pretended legislation. It's not going to happen in my jurisdiction if I'm left in office. And 